11 years old. So you were... Um, in 1937, I was born. So I was there in Sibiu from 1937 to 1948, when, till I was 11. Got it. Okay. So when you were 11, you, you moved to America. We'll talk about that soon. Yes. Now, um, did you go to school? Were you allowed to go to school during the war? Yes. Okay. That's very interesting. Romania was before the Shoah even a very anti-Semitic country. And um, there was what's known as the quota, numerus clausus, which meant that Jewish people could conceivably go to public school, but only at certain numbers, or for that matter, high school. So the Jewish community generally had their own schools for general studies, and they had the, in the morning, that's eight to one, and they had the afternoon, uh, an old fashioned cheder, you learned. So you went to two yes. different schools at the same time? Yes, yes, in the morning. But they were all, both of them were just for in, Jews? Under the community, under the auspices of the community where my father was a chief rabbi. But there were many uh -huh. cities in Europe like that because the Jews could not go to medical school, to law school, to gymnasia, to high school. It was a, a lot of discrimination before because it was an anti-Semitic country. Ah, so the rules were that Jews couldn't could only go to their own school, but they couldn't go to school. college. You wanted your own school, you you had to go somewhere. Okay. But were you were you safe in your own school? Was it like nice and play? could okay. you go play ball? Can you? Okay, I'll tell you something very interesting. The school itself was nice. It was only Jewish kids and so on. But when you went home from school, you were accosted by non-Jewish kids who threw stones at you and said, you killed our God, et cetera, et cetera. And some of them even fell on me with dogs. I was, till I came to America, I still am afraid of dogs. Because when I was a kid, I was taken up to the second floor and rolled down and dogs jumped on me because I, I killed their God. So that- You didn't call the a lot of police or anything like that? You couldn't, did you call the police? The police didn't help there. The police there just stood by. It's not, it wasn't a crime to, to shout dirty Jew. It wasn't a crime to throw a stone on a Jew. It was a harassment was part of our day. The, so they, they allowed it. They allowed, they allowed, they didn't they allowed do it. it to happen. They were passive. And that's pretty much how you lived throughout the throughout the war. That's so you, how you I lived until thank the, God, I guess you weren't sent to a concentration until camp, right? Even after the Nazis lost the war, and even after the communists took over, but that culture was not eradicated. And all of the members of your family were 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 survived. Well, my immediate family, my brother and my parents, of course, survived because. I'll tell you why. But the truth is both my grandparents, my paternal and and, uh, and maternal grandparents lived in areas where we we're not so lucky. So now I want to give you some background. I told you I grew up in Romania, in Transylvania. After the First World War, Romania had a lot of ethnic groups. So there was a big problem. Are they Romanian? Are they Hungarian? Are they Russian? Are they German? There were many Saxons there. To make a long story short, between the First and Second World War, Romania was chopped up in three ways. One part went to Hungary. Another part went to Russia. And one remained integral Romania. Those, who, those people who ended up in Hungary ended up in Auschwitz in 1944. Those people who ended up in Russia ended up in a place of hell called Transnistria. That's where my maternal, that was Chernobyl, et cetera, et cetera. We were lucky to be in integral Romania, which remained Romania throughout, throughout. There, there was a very interesting, in, interesting phenomenon. The Romanian government, which was openly anti-Semitic and which won an election in 1940 on an anti-Semitic platform, told the Germans, we will handle our Jews our own way. And they didn't think of gas chambers. So we lived with discrimination 
The Jews couldn't travel on train, for example, and so on and so forth. Jews, uh, our telephone was taken away. Sometimes our beautiful homes were taken away, but we were not deported. We lived a relatively, relatively normal life. We went to school, I took bicycle lessons and so on and so forth, but we were not deported in ghettos. That 250,000 Romanian Jews in the midst of all the, all the hell that was Europe were not deported. So that's how they were saying. That's how you, and that's how you survived, right? Now you told, you always told us a story about how your brother saved her brother, I think? Yeah, I'll tell you the story again. My mother, okay. you know, I told you, you mentioned before, I come from a rabbinic family. So I had an uncle, my mother's brother, was a rabbi in the city, the big city called Bakau, Romania. Oh, my father was the chief rabbi where we were, was involved. He knew what was happening in the world. And there was a rumor that that city will be given over to Russia. And if that city would be given over to Russia, it, it, the news was not good. So what happened was, uh, how do you travel? How do you travel? How do you inform such you, a, you buy a You buy a ticket on they, a train. They, they, there is no cell phone. There is no email. You can't talk a telephone, on the telephone because these are secrets of the war. You'd be prosecuted. So my mother had to travel. She had to travel on two trains to that city where my uncle lived. But the Jew couldn't travel because if they came for your papers and the paper said Jew on it, so they threw you off the, off, the, off the train. So my mother disguised herself as a Romanian farmer with a black coarse skirt, with a black shawl. She took a, a chicken, a dozen eggs, and the Romanian staple called Mamaliga. And that's how she went on third class. Remember, a farmer can't travel on first class. She traveled on third class took two trains overnight. She reached my uncle in Bacau, but they were no taxes to hire those days. So they hired the horse and buggy, put the family in and drove on the horse and buggy for 75 kilometers south, which was not going to be given over to Russia. And that's how she saved the whole family. And if they would have stopped for one minute, minute to ask her for her papers, they would have thrown her off the plane, off, off the train. Uh -huh. That's uh -huh. how she saved the okay. family. Well, and then they moved to, to California. We'll talk about that in a second. I'm just gonna, oh, there we go. That's, oh, it's much, the picture's much better now. I thought we were gonna okay. move, but now I can see you better. Um, uh, okay. Um, tell me about um, how you ended up in America. How I ended up in America. That's interesting. <clears throat> After the war, we lived in Romania. We knew that, of course, the, the Germans were defeated, but the communists took over Romania. And over the communists, under the Germans, there was physical destruction. Under the communists, there was spiritual destruction. No Jewish schools were allowed. No Jewish culture was allowed. We knew that we couldn't exist there. So we had two choices to go. We could have in 1948, just before the Medina was founded, gone to mandatory Palestine, or we could have gone to our uncle in America. And uh, my, my mother wanted to go to my uncle in America. So we ended up in America in 1948. Okay. And um, did you hear a lot of stories about the Shoah when you, like, was that part of, part of growing up? Was it telling those stories course, over and yeah, over again? Yeah, did the people not want to talk about it? Uh, I, uh, the reason I heard stories of the Schwabers for two reasons. Number one, because as I told you, uh, first of all, I had one aunt who was saved from Auschwitz. You knew her, Tante Leah. She was saved mm -hmm. from Auschwitz. She was 15, 16 in 1944, and she came straight from Auschwitz to us. And while she was reticent in the beginning to speak about the Shoah, but in the very beginning, obviously, she, she had to. She, she could not speak about the Shoah. So we heard stories about, for example, 
my father had a younger brother who was in the ghetto. And my grandfather had a lot of pull with Hungarian authorities. So he, so one, my uncle, the younger brother of my father was already dressed in Hungarian police clothes and he was out of the ghetto, but he missed his father very much. So he ran back to the ghetto. So that's, uh, and, the, and he was lost. Uh, we, we heard stories about, uh, about uh, the particular Mengele a lot because uh, anybody who was in Auschwitz one way or another, I don't know if you heard about Mengele, Mengele did a lot of unfortunately experiments on Jews and we heard about that. And uh, for that matter, <clears throat> if you remember, not only about Auschwitz, but Transnistria, we have, I think I gave you a paper something that was printed in the equivalent of the Romanian New York Times in 1946. It was called, the article was called in Romanian, the minion of the dead. That minion of the dead speaks about how 10 people in Transnistria died one by one by, by one. These were all my, my maternal grandparents and my uncles and cousins, etc., etc. The whole Ginsburg family how they died in Auschwitz, and you still have the paper somewhere. You should have it. I gave it. Wow. Back. Okay. Okay. Um, Ar Ariella, if I, I think we can open it up to questions okay. now from anybody in your in your classes. Um, I guess people can either be invited up to speak, or if you want to write something in the chat, or however, whatever works for you, Ariella, because I'm not here. Great. So our plan is to have to go through each class, and one student at a time sure. will come up to ask their question. So we'll start with for you. If that works for Mrs. Hershaw. Sure. Of course. Oh, works. <laughs> <laughs> or you. <laughs> What's the question? Um, so we're getting we're the waiting for it. Hold on one out. second. We're going to get it in a second. Here we go. So somebody from For You is going to come up. For B. If you can plan our questions. Do you have a question, Major? Or unmute it. Are there any questions before I move it? Okay. So we have some questions. Here we go. Just make sure you're 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 loud and clear so we can hear your question. Yeah. And introduce yourself. My father likes to meet people. Hello. Um did you go in like were you in the ghetto? Were you in a ghetto? We were not in a ghetto. We were not in a ghetto. That was the one good thing in Romania. There was no in that part of Romania, there was no ghetto. Okay. When you got um, Amira, when you got to America, was it hard to like live there and get food and stuff? Was it hard? To live in America when you got here, you were an immigrant. Okay. Uh, well, remember we were new immigrants. My father didn't yet have a job. And it was not so easy, but uh, with God's help, you know, we came to America, we got used to it. My father learned English. He went to school to learn English or to speak a better English. He didn't know English, but he had many languages. But once he got a job, it became easier. The first year, you should know that we were in America, we were not in New York. We were in a city called Minneapolis and there was no Jewish education. We weren't lucky to go to a Jewish school like SAR or Yeshiva Kitano of that sort. So I went to public school for the first year and it wasn't easy. But after that, it became easy. Okay. Great questions, guys. Okay, now Thor V has a few questions. Okay, we're switching classes, Abba. We're gonna get you okay. in a second. Hi, my name is Eden. Um, were there more Nazis than Jews in the Holocaust? I didn't hear. Uh, uh, the question was about the Holocaust. Like, were there more Nazis than Jews? In other words, how, you know, what was the kind of? Well, we lived in Romania. The Jews were a minority, but there were a lot of anti-Semites. 
many of them Nazis, and uh, they didn't make it easy for us. But uh, the, in terms of the numbers, many of them were, we called them not Nazis those days, we called them fascists. Romania was a very anti-Semitic country those days. It probably still is, I don't know. I haven't, I haven't been there for a long time. Hi, my name is Kaya. What was one good thing that came out of like what yeah. happened? Did, did anything? Can you think of anything good that came out of your experience? A good thing that came out of what, your experience somehow? Well, the good thing that came out of my experience is number one that with God's help we were saved. The second thing is that. Um, while the things were difficult, but when they when when there was not too much discrimination, first of all, there was no deportation. That was wonderful. That we lived in our own homes and we went to all our own schools, and the schools were very good, and uh, we learned a lot. So in that sense, things were, you know, things could have been much much worse than just. Uh, people shouting at me or falling with stones on me that I killed their God. And uh, better things happened. We, the fact of it, that we lived a normal life also meant that uh, there were Jewish youth groups and so on and so forth that gave us a little bit of a normalcy. It was abnormal times. The, the times were abnormal, but they gave us a little bit of a normalcy because it wasn't, we were not deported. That was the greatest miracle that happened to Romanian Jewry. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Hi, my name is Dahlia. Was it hard to get food? Okay, that's a very good question. What happened as I told you, Romania was an anti-Semitic country. So Jews couldn't go shopping. What does it mean they couldn't go shopping? They could go shopping, but let's say only after 11 o'clock in the morning. By then the stores were empty because you know the, it's war, remember it was wartime. Things were not easy for anybody, but if you don't allow the Jews to go shopping before 11 o'clock, and if you go before 11 o'clock and they find out that you're Jewish, you get a a, a ticket the way you get a traffic ticket now. So it made it very difficult for Jews to, to get what they wanted. Things were not easy that way. Things were not easy, not because there was hunger per se, but because they made it difficult for Jews to go shopping when there was still food in the stores. Yes, it was difficult. Certain things that were just normal things that we take for granted were hard. Who's up? Some, you, your screen is frozen up for me, Ariel, but we hear you, so we're okay. Go ahead. Oh, sorry, that's my computer. <laughs> okay. That's okay. Hi, my name is Nikita. What does it mean by we killed our God? Oh, you keep on, you said you, like when people said to you, you killed our God. What, can you explain that? Well, uh, what, what they meant was that uh, 2,000 years ago, when, uh, <clears throat> when Jesus came with his message, Jews didn't accept him, and the Roman authorities uh, condemned him to death. But since it was done in, in what is now known as Israel, they blamed the Jews for that. And till recently, the non-Jewish world took it for granted that the people who were guilty in the death of Jesus were the Jews. And uh, the Catholic Church uh, were, uh, had that in their worship till about... 50 years ago. It's only relatively recently that that thing stopped, at least as official doctrine of the church. So yeah, that's what I meant. Okay, thank you. Thank you for explaining um, that. What? I'm gonna make, I'm gonna make more over a co-host, co hopefully we'll unfreeze. But in the meantime, um, we're going to switch to 4W for their questions. Okay, and Ariel, you might have to moderate this one because I'm going to have to walk away for a second. Okay. Um, here we go. For W, you're pinned.
Hi, how are you? Um, when your uncle and your mom escape, I'm, I'm really so cool. And when uh, your mom and uncle escape, when your uncle and mom left where he lived, where did he go? Where did they okay. go? When my mother saved my uncle, you have to know Romania a little. Bacau is a little bit north, and that was rumored to be going to Russia. So they went 150 kilometers south to a city called Moinesh, and that was never going to be switched. So that's how they were saved, because they went south. Generally, the, wherever you were in Romania, when you were more south, after a certain line, you were safer as a Jew. So in that place too, they went south and they remained in Romania. That's the best way I can explain it. Hi, I'm Chloe. Um, and I have a question. Was was the Jewish school, did the Jewish schools have a lot of money or were they small? Okay. So let me just tell you, uh, the, this takes a little background. In many European countries, it wasn't like in America where the schools are independent. There were also, as long as you were recognized by the government, there was also some government aid to schools. So if a Jewish school had to be founded because in, in the, the, not, the Jews could not go to the public school, so the government helped fund that. The government and the community helped fund that. So generally, if a school, if a community had the Jewish school, even though they studied some religious subjects, nevertheless, it was, its fund, funding was helped by the government. So there was not, I'm not telling you they gave them loads of money, but they certainly had ways of existing so they could function. And the Jewish schools were generally very good schools. Did I answer your question? Yeah, that was good. Okay, this is, this is our last question. Thank you so much. My name is Lee Tal. Um, was it hard in Romania before the war? I didn't. She asked, was it hard in Romania before the war? Okay, it was hard in a different way. As I mentioned many times, Romania was not a place for spitable Jews. There was a lot of anti-Semitism. For example, before the World War, there were pogroms in Romania. You know what the pogrom is? The pogrom is a wild eruption of people against the Jewish quarter, sometimes killing many Jews. But it was on a relatively low level because you know the, the, the world did not learn the lesson of Hitler that you can kill Jews. So therefore, yes, Romania was anti-Semitic. There were difficulties, but the difficulties could be overcome. So there were Jewish schools and there were Jewish youth groups there were Jewish sports groups. So, you know, they overcame the, the, the anti-Semitism. But during the Second World War, anti-Semitism erupted with a, with a force, vengefully, and it was more difficult. Okay. Rabbi Krauss, thank you so much. We learned so much from you and we're gonna continue the conversation in class. And we really appreciate the time that you took to share your story with us. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.